What a day on Patong Beach. There you go. A little bit more of the beach. Patong Beach. First place I landed in Phuket, right out there on a ship in 1989, 88, 88, and it was not this busy. That road there, across the way, you can see the welcome sign. Welcome to Patong Beach, right over there. It's called Bangla Road. And uh, in 1989, it was, let's see, I was here first in 88. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> big deal. 30, what, three years ago, 34 years ago. Uh, Bangalore Road was a dirt, dead end dirt road. <laughs> now this place, and there wasn't much else. Was beer bars and stuff. Much nicer. <laughs> but I'm up here for a, uh, for a, immigration visit and I'll explain that with my face and the camera. Okay, so the story is this. I'm up here because I need my third um, certificate of residency. The reason I need that is my motorbike. I previously got two a couple months back in order to renew my two driver's licenses. Can't do it with one. If you want to drive a car and a motorbike, you need two two separate licenses, two sets of paperwork, two fees, everything. And uh, you know, if you're in the U.S., chances are if you have if you can drive a motorcycle on your driver's license, it has an MC code. At least it does in California, and Nevada, where I've had, and Oregon, where I've had driver's licenses in the states. So uh, that's that. Um, the uh, the reason for that is my motorbike is just a clusterfuck. I bought it in Chiang Mai uh, almost, well, um, in the winter of 2020 while I was in Chiang Mai. And I bought it, I bought it from a person who loaned money on it as security and needed their money back and the person owed the money, couldn't pay it, so that was that. The problem was, I was on a tourist visa at the time, so I couldn't get a certificate of residency, which means I couldn't register it in my name. So um, I had to wait some months. I finally got the finally got my visa in July. So I bought the motorbike in like February, March, something like that, maybe April and um, of 2020. So it was all the way in July where I had my visa. I could get my residence certificate where I lived. And from that, I could get the bike registered. Okay. So the person I bought it from shipped it down to me from Chiang Mai and so everything was cool. Signed the paperwork to sign it over. Gave that to the transportation office in Patia, where I was at the time. And uh, everything was good. They do a serial number verification. All that's normal stuff, right? Then I wait, 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 wait. Then in the meet, so now it's like, I did this in maybe September, October. And it's already end of December, and I'm wanting to move to here to Phuket. And I'm like, hey, you know, I had a lady who was helping me who worked at the transportation office. So anyway, day I leave for Phuket, I have to drive up there, and she gets she's able to give me the green book. The green book is like what's a master registration. Thailand, you have a green book for your vehicles. For each vehicle has a green book. Yeah, I have a house. It's called a house book or a yellow book. It's yellow in color. So it's a book. And they put it in one of those machines. And it's, it's like an old uh, uh, bank account pass, savings passbook, about twice as big. 
right? And um, in fact, they, yeah, they, they, they have bank passbooks too still, right? You put them in machines and it actually prints on them, prints on the pages if you want it updated. I never bother with mine. Um, so uh, they get me the green book. So it has my name. It's registered in Chunbury with a new license number, license plate number. Because the one on it is the Chiang Mai, right, Chiang Mai province, with the Chiang Mai license plate number. Said, oh, we'll mail you the plate. <laughs> Two years later, I still haven't got it. And I tried many times, and it was always, oh, COVID, Mirai, cannot, COVID. COVID, COVID, COVID. You know, any everybody in the world knows that COVID was a massive excuse to not, to not do shit, to, to, to fuck off on your job, to not do your job, to not serve people who are paying you. Everything. All over the world. COVID, COVID, COVID. Cannot. COVID, COVID. Fuck off. Anyway. So, <laughs> now, the story's not finished yet. <laughs> it gets better. <laughs> so, you know, here, you know, in, in the U.S., the uh, uh, car registration, you, you have to do it. I mean, because the tags are on your plate. Police will stop you. You know, it's a pain in the ass. So you have to pay your registration. There's no tags on license plates here, right? Um, so, and police don't give a fuck. <laughs> Even if it's out of date. I know people who've never registered their bikes. They're years old. And there's, it's actually a tax. It's an annual tax. It's not a big amount of money. It's like 200 baht, something like that. Six bucks. It's not big, right? But it's a pain in the ass, which I'll get to. <laughs> so, um, the, uh, the, um, so I go, finally, um, I'm like, you know what? I need to get this tax caught up. And they have the, the stations here, the inspection stations. Before, uh, I, you know, I'm a year out of, I'm almost a year past due on it. So I was going to just pay two years, right? Pay 2022 and it expires in February. So pay 2022, pay 2023, be done with it, right? So I take it to the inspection station I used before. You Normally you just hand them the, the green book and, uh, you know, you come back a couple days later, they've taken it to the transportation office, done everything and you pay them the money plus their fee and you're done easy right so this time I go in he looks at the motorbike he's like and he looks at my green book he's like clean clean, clean. <sighs> turns out what he meant was that it's a different color so it was dirt you know he's using something you know or we have associate with dirty but I know he doesn't mean that he's not stupid right but he shows me in the green book the Thai word for black because it was black before. Now it's green. Change color. Uh oh. Another whole set of paperwork for that. <laughs> and standing in a line. You know, the lines are so popular here in France or in Thailand. Um, in Thailand, lines are so popular that Thais think the word Q is a Thai word. <laughs> Seriously. Everybody knows the word Q. Right. So. So anyway, finally I said I give up. So someone had told me about this super good inspection station. It's a private company, but they're like an agent for the transportation office, and they do the inspections. They do everything, right? Um, I said, and it's not far away. It's like five kilometers away from my house. So I just drove up there. I said, "Fuck it, drive up there." go down the list of shits. I have an actual receipt with seven line items of fucked up shit about my motorbike, <laughs> including changing the color uh, in the records, right? Total of 4,500 4, baht, which is like 130 bucks. So it's not, it was a, it's a lot to fix all this shit. But one of the things I need is a goddamn residency certificate again. So, which is another 500 baht. So I just uh, dropped the paperwork. It's a whole fucking stack of paperwork to get the residency certificate that goes in the other stack of paperwork. <laughs> Shit, you know. 
and and so I have to go back in an hour and a half to get my residency certificate and dash off. I'm going to take a different route back because it goes right to Shillong Circle and the agents, the inspection station is like 200, 300 yard uh, meters from there and turn that in and then I should have everything done. They're registering the bike. They said the easiest way to do this because you don't have the plate. It still has a Chiang Mai plate on it. Oh, that it gives the cops actually get a kick out of it because you get stopped here a lot. They just check, stop to check you out. As soon as they see I have my driver's licenses, it's no problem. Right? Shows you're not a scofflaw. So it's important to get the driver's license. Big importance. Right? Even people with international driver's license, they don't get that treatment. I show, my, and, I, and I have two one for motorcycle and one for car. I whip that out, and it's like, okay, sir. You know, plus when I go to the barber, they say, "What do you want?" I say, "Thai police haircut," because they wear a, like a U.S. Marine Corps high and tight, and so that's what I get. And so when I when whenever a cop stops me, I say, "Thai police," <laughs> and save me. That got me a two hundred baht discount on a no helmet fine once. See, right here in Patong, you're stopping everybody, right? Five hundred baht, you have to go pay at the station, right? I'm kind of, come on. And I just got a fresh haircut. I said, look, Thai police haircut. He says, okay, 300 bucks. So he gave me. Everybody else was paying 500 So, which, by the way, is about $15. People say, oh, you get you pay a lot of fines. Yeah, the total amount of in fines I've paid since I've been here, it's probably like four or five different times I've been fined, probably amounts to no more than 50 bucks. Yeah, try that in the United States. It, uh, I think uh, most states uh, uh, a traffic ticket they start at like three hundred, right? So anyway, um, so, so Chiang Mai plate, green book with my name, and the Chonburi registration with a different plate number, but that's in the green book. But it's not on the bike. Different color, all these things. So it's all. So, and so, so it's about Asian bureaucracy. So much reminds me of when I lived in Japan from 84 to 89, five years. In that time, that five years, I owned three, three different vehicles, three cars, and one motorcycle. And um, to get it registered was one day. The, the, the ship that I was assigned to, the USS Reeves, would give you the day off because they knew you have to go to Yokohama which is about an hour drive, it's halfway between Yokosuka and Tokyo. Go there and to the office, and it's like, I don't know, five, six buildings. And you go to the first thing, you get this stack of paperwork, a half an inch thick or so, and then you have this kind of course, it's like a, a treasure map. And you have to go from building to building to queue to queue to queue within the buildings where you take it up there and a guy sits behind the counter and rifles through your work and pulls out a form here and there and he has his bank of all these stamps, you know, stamps. And stamps here and stamps there and the hand it back and you gotta go to the next guy. So it's it, I, it's it's beyond their, their ability, I guess, to have like, you take it to one place and they look through and have all of the appropriate stamps you need and they're familiar with every department's requirements or needs or whatever. That's why I think I think generally if for uh, 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 unemployment numbers are bullshit, right? Because because this what I saw in Japan in the late 80s is a full employment scheme if I've ever seen one. I mean, it's amazing. You know, nobody's unemployed. <laughs> but what, what are they doing? <laughs> what are they doing? Okay, so what else? Uh, anyway, you can tie, you know, I'm in, in good spirits because you just got to laugh at this shit. Right? Just got to laugh at it. And plus, what, what kind of background is that? Like, like here, who am I? You know, we uh, us guys who live here, you know, we, we laugh at ourselves often enough because we'll sit around and we'll start complaining about something. And, you know, you hate it. You're pissed off. You're complaining about this and this and this and this and this. And then you start laughing. Because you're like, look at where I live. Look at what my day is like. You know. In fact, I was just down on Bangla Road there before the, uh, because the, the office was closed for lunch. So I was down there, 
and I was uh, chatting with this bar girl from Isan, not not super far from where I built a house. Oh, it's just gonna be as fun. It's a big different scene here. In Hawaii, you don't have bars with with nice girls sitting there where you can just sit and chat uh, during the daytime. It's all nighttime kind of thing. It sucks. It really sucks, you know, for for, for the bar girl scene. Um, so anyway, I'll end on that note. Complaining again, see? <laughs> I always have to complain about something. All right. See, see you later. Bye.